I'm Ellie Chowns. I'm a um, Green Party councillor for Bishop's Throom and Cradley Ward in Herefordshire. I'll do a quick um, whiz through. Um, I've got a few slides which I'll just use as a sort of structure for what I'm going to say. So um, I'm Ellie Chowns. <laughs> I won a, a, a count, well, not county, unitary authority by election in November, so two months ago. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk briefly about how we did it, in my view. So this is a very Tory constituency. The general election last year, the Tory incumbent won 62% of the vote, up 6%. Um, and, you know, despite being absolutely awful, it's very Tory. It's a very Tory council, Tory majority. We've got this party, It's Our County, IOC, that's got quite a strong presence, which sort of um, makes the electoral arithmetic a bit more interesting. In my by-election, they actually stood aside for me and, uh, well, hmm, they, stood, they didn't put a candidate up and a few of their activists actively supported me. So that was an interesting factor. And it's a very Tory ward. So um, seven years earlier, the Tory got 85% of the vote. She got 69% in 2015, which was the first time I contested it. There is a bit of green history. We've got three um, other green councillors in Herefordshire already, and we'd won a by-election in March. Um, and part of my ward used to be green um, about 10 something years ago before boundary changes. Um, so we, you know, that was one of the reasons we selected it. You know, we thought there was potential there. Um, and although I don't live in the ward, I live very close to it. We knew the by-election was coming up because the incumbent, the deputy leader of the council, had gone sailing, um, but we didn't actually do any preparation for it for a number of reasons. Um, but come October, when early October, we knew this was happening and I agreed to stand. So we had five, six weeks to run the campaign. Why did we win? Three reasons, I think. Um, candidate obviously is important, but by definitely not the be all and end all. Good things about me, I'm a woman. Uh, it's a council full of old white men. And so there was a sort of fresh, eight, fresh face, breath of fresh air argument we could make. Um, and I was a little bit known, A, because I stood there before, and B, because I contested the parliamentary election. So there was a little bit of recognition. But I hadn't been, you know, working in the ward, sort of, uh, you know, cultivating it um, explicitly in between those elections. Very important, the team. So I had a fantastic campaign manager who stepped up to the plate and worked on it pretty much full time for five weeks. Um, uh, he just recently retired and organised fitting and all the rest of it. But by far the most important reason why we won was strategy and messaging. And I'm just going to run through a few points from, from that. So I'll show you some of the materials that we put out. But um, just a few, a, a couple of strategic points. One, appealing to the common ground. I mean, um, Zoe made this point. To win a Tory ward, you have to win Tory votes. So uh, we got the Tory vote down from 85% down to 29% in the context of the Lib Dems winning um, about a third of the votes last November as well. So actually a lot of Tories voted for me and they did so because they wanted fresh voices, they wanted accountability or independence, all the things that I was offering. But it really wouldn't have worked to say, you know, all Tories are outrageous. And although, and we tried to get quite a kind of fine line in our materials about, on the one hand, you know, we, we've got lots of common ground with Tories and we want to look for opportunities for common ground and working cross party. Um, on the other hand, our Tory led councillors let us down in all sorts of terrible ways and they really need somebody to put them back on the straight and narrow. Creating a sense of momentum, which is really about how we built up the sort of the publication. So each household got four bits of literature through their door. Lots of them were knocked and we had a poster campaign in the last four days as well. And this all sort of relates to the Mid West Midlands model really or the sort of target to win idea. Um, we didn't manage effective frequency of 10 or 15. Four messages basically is what we managed. But we were very clear about thinking what are our messages going to be and using them sort of tweaked in various ways in our publications. Um, and, you know, a bit of luck, basically. So some of the key messages, I can win. Zoe emphasised this, you know, really important. I came second last time and we used that loads. I've got a, um, here we are. It's between Ellie and the Conservative here, it says. Now, I came second last time because nobody else stood. There were only two candidates. 
so I also came last last time. But um, we, you know, we got really strong advice and support from the West Midlands to say, I came second, I can win this time. Now, Labour and the Lib Dems, I think, didn't like that so much because the Lib Dem certainly lived in the ward, as did the Conservative, and the Lib Dem thought, you know, it should be hers by right kind of thing. Um, but again, had no track record of campaigning. So it was really important, even though I basically didn't campaign very much in 2015, just that perceived track record in the ward was really important as a springboard for this, for this victory. Uh, it's safe to elect me, it's a by-election, we're not going to change the whole makeup of the council, so if you're a Conservative, you're still going to have a Conservative candidate, a Conservative council, but you'll have an independent local person who will vote freely on local issues, who will fight, fight your corner, who will scrutinise what the council does, who will make it more accountable, who will counteract the complacency, you know, I had the local, the ex-treasurer of the local Conservative Association saying, I'm absolutely voting for you, Know, the, the, I know what it's like from the inside, they're far too co complacent. Um, so that, that sort of line about independence and accountability went down really, really well. And I suspect might go down well in, in other rural areas too. Just actually, I didn't say on the ward, very rural, uh, 2,600 um, uh, electors. 75% turnout in a general election, which of course is the last marked register that we had. So we didn't really know who our local election voters were gonna be. We had about 40 something percent turnout in this by-election. Um, two, two substantial villages, there's a few hundred people each, but a lot of it very, very dispersed and rural. So a lot of you know, foot leather went into deliveries. Um, uh, another key message, I'm competent, you know, relevant experience, that sort of thing. I'm actually a, a doctor, not a medical one, but we put doctor on all the things just to make it look like, you know, somebody you can trust, that sort of thing. But the key thing is, you know, I'm hardworking, not to be afraid of shouting that in the literature, but also being seen to be hardworking. So it was practically one piece of literature every week. Um, including, you know, right up until election day. So we did blue letters two days, two days, one day before postal votes and election day. Do you know what the blue letters are? No, maybe. So um, actually, I'll walk you through. I'll walk you through the publications now. So the minute the by-election was announced, I just did, this is an A4 uh, letter, very simple, just saying why I'm going to stand and why I want your support. So it's the first bit of literature that anybody got through their door, so we got that sort of first little advantage. Then um, we had a big sort of A3 glossy folded thing, um, just, you know, pictures of me with local, that's the ex-councillor in the top left there, um, local people in a cafe, that sort of thing. That, and that thing about, it's between Ellie and the Conservative here, really emphasising that. I didn't particularly like this leaflet, but I had really good feedback on it from local people saying, I just liked the clarity of what you were saying. So, I don't know, horses for courses. Um, calling cards, again, from, from canvassing, again, it's between Ellie Chowns and the Conservatives here, you know, really hammering that message. And the blue letter was a handwritten letter printed on blue paper, in um, hand-addressed blue envelopes, which was hand-delivered to every single um, person on the marked register. So the full 75% of people who voted in 2015, half of whom weren't likely to vote in this anyway, um, just saying, you know, again, Green Party second place last time, we can win, hammering home those, those key messages. And people would come up to me in the street in the week or two after I won the election, randomly in the local market town saying that letter you know that blue letter was really what swung it for me so really worth doing and then we had um, a poster campaign so we recycled the one from the parliamentary uh, again nobody else did that we put them up the Saturday Sunday before polling day so they were just up for four or five days but they made a massive impact had about 40 of them throughout the ward and again it just gave people that sense of this momentum this growing campaign and yeah everybody sort of wants to get behind you and then on polling day itself I was out and about in in all of the polling stations practically all day in the major ones in the freezing cold weather and again people that afterwards were saying oh you've worked so hard all those hours by the polling station you know so it clearly made a difference just being there. And so we got the result. This is polling night after the, after the count. We did 
um, a, a, a great sort of um, election count uh, job. So we were tallying the votes as we went. So it was clear to us very early on that we'd won and it was actually unexpected if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, it was delightful. So good luck with your own campaigns. Thank you.